A little bit of a combo today. I want to update you on the Orchid Top orchids that I have in my collection. And well, I think there are two that I need to deal with ASAP, or we may not see them for much longer. So might as well get that documented. If you're up for it, let's go. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your interest. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate you. This is my Vandoglossum Alexandra, my 2.0. There are developments, all of them are positive. I've had some new root growth starting. Now some root tips have stopped. Porque I'm keeping everything nice and humid. I've got the dish and everything filled with water, just plain water because I don't want to tax the orchid with too much fertilizer in my super dry climate. I do mist around the edges every day as I do with many of my orchid tops. So I am thinking that it is probably just a question of this orchid is now not so much actively growing roots anymore as she is hopefully vegetative growth. She did bloom for us, it was awesome. Has the cutest petite little Vanda blooms that look translucent with a blueberry sugar fragrance totally matching the optics of those blooms. I'm really pleased that she at least has started to grow some new roots. And then I always wonder, why do orchid roots have to do the piercing of their own cell structures, probably causing a leaf to die when a new root grows? Oh well, I just hope that everything goes well down there. And I hope that she knows what she's doing because <clears throat> that accounts to 90% of the success in keeping this orchid in my collection. But at least we've got a start on a new root system. As we move along through these individual orchids, if you have any questions with regards to what you see in the pot, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to clarify because some of these orchids featured in my masterclass series about layering with lava rock, etc. So any questions? The comments are there for a reason. This is my Renanthera monachica. Did not bloom for us this season. Don't blame her. Super highlight orchid. And that's not what she had during my late winter, early spring. Oh, and the root growth, she is so, so stingy. <laughs> but I'm just going to say thank you so much for that single root. Much needed and much appreciated that you're going straight into the media. Please do not come out the other side. I would prefer you just to go in there, curl around, get used to the environment and support the orchid for future years. I have a microfiber threaded in and around the front here, which I normally had lying over the surface of the media. Today I've got a humidity of 15%, so at least there's no wind. It's a good day. But this microfiber here I took off because Renanthra monachicas, in my experience, have a tendency for stem rot. So I peeled off all the media that could be around the base, even though, you know, she looks a little bit high. That's fine. That's intentional. <laughs> anything to avoid stem rot. But hey, yes, I do mist this area every morning just once. And also her dish is always filled with water when it comes to fertilizing. Oh, very, very carefully. I will put some fertilizer water into the dish, but uh, I'm not being that aggressive again because of my super dry climate. And you can see that there is some salt buildup on the medium, but it is minimal. For me right now, it's about getting her to strength before we head into the next winter, where she will again have to be faced with low light levels and colder temperature than she would prefer. That one route, cartwheels around the patio. I also have two more orchid top orchids in the grow space. They do not come outside, but I took some images and I will show you their progress. Okay, uh, that is a weird position. Why face the orchid with the tag? Let's turn her around carefully. This is Renanthra Caloptera. I got her from Anonymous. And goodness me, thank you so much. She is the yang to the ying of the Mona Chica because she is growing new roots, four of them in total, which is huh, unexpected because this is my first full year with her. Very slow on the root growth front, but also very slow on the vegetative growth front. So it'll be a couple of years to see her blooms as long as we have her in the collection all these years so that we can get her to blooming size. So her new leaf here, that's been growing since the beginning of 2023. Muy, muy lento, but alive. Four roots, mm. no complaints here at all. Same as the Mona Chica, 
I am definitely keeping her elevated above the media. I am not going to try and risk losing this orchid having learned my lesson with Mona Chica. So thank you, Anonymous. And look at here, Renanthra Caloptera doing fabulously in my opinion. Let me know what you think. Okay, we've got a situation here where during the winter, Sertorcus pretamisa was doing great. I was so, so happy. All these orchids, low light levels, they all live together. They're all in a group, even during the winter months. She grew some fabulous roots last year and then they stopped growing. She was bolt upright in the orchid top. And since she's come outside, which was when the temperatures were like 18 degrees Celsius at night, since she came outside, she is doing this funky, leaning forward thing, looking a little bit dodgy, even though the middle leaf is growing well. I don't see any issues. The roots that had stopped growing last year have started growing again. We've got active root tips, but it is the lean I am not pleased with, and I'm very worried something's going on in the pot. We're going to address this orchid in this video. Once I show you the other three that we have left, I will need to see what's going on in that pot. I hate to have to do this, but I'm not just going to blindly stake her upright. She was strong and bolt upright when she came onto the patio for the late season of spring, summer, and early fall of 2023. Mm, I do not like what I'm seeing. I am showing you my leones on a profile because, yeah, we are going to address this orchid as well. Super concerned as to what's going on here. There's a second leaf here that I kept just for when I could get around to filming this. Here is another leaf. They just came off in rapid succession. I have seen this happen before and it turned out I lost my other Leonis. I used to have two. I think I had the bigger one from the Comoros and this one would be the smaller one from Madagascar. Never ever got either of them to bloom. Meanwhile, granted, this one was tiny when she came to my collection. They're not exactly fast growers, but still this lean, it has me well concerned. We're gonna address her first, see if I can get her out of the pot without messing up with any roots that could be viable in the pot. But I do want to have a look at what's going on in the stem here. And yes, I can't miss because I think I lost my first Leonis to stem rot. Oh, okay, here goes. In the grow space, I have Orangus fastuosa. We repositioned her early, early in the year because she was starting new roots. She lost a leaf at the base. I'm hoping that that is only because the leaf was old. I couldn't really tell because by the time I noticed it, it was already coming off relatively easy. And on top of that, the roots that I was hoping would just go into the media, they haven't exactly progressed either. And that's why I'm not really moving her much. I'm leaving her be to her own vices. She grew a new leaf, which is great. So all I could ask is that that new leaf really grew well considering. And all I do there is mist the ceramus around the edge of the pot, not at the base of the orchid. And I keep the dish filled with water. So these roots are clearly compromised, she says. It really looks like it. Meanwhile, they're also super duper old. I'm just going to work my way around right here to see what I can see before just thinking I'm going to tip her out of the orchid top. If there are no viable roots in here, then at least we'll find out in a gentle way. Because with the Orangus fastuosa back in the day, I was like, yeah, the roots in there are all dead. And I went and took her out of the pot and there was still a viable root. And I was like, yeah. I could have been gentler with that one as well. So I'm just going to take that lesson for what it's worth and be a little bit more cautious here and see what we're up against before we take her out. Oh, yeah, I saw scale on the roots, which I dealt with. Scale on the roots was also a thing for my little tolumnias. The scale is tiny, but at least it's visible. But wow. That would be a nightmare if I've got scale in the stem because then this one is truly a goner. It's a beautiful viable root here that I'd like to not destroy. It's 
So I've got little bits of ceramics, not much. The majority of the median here is very small lava rock. Increase the humidity, work with the orchid tops, function as a semi-hydroponic setup. Not necessarily working with any wicking characteristics that lava rock does not have. Instead, water retention and high humidity around the orchid. I also have Angraecum didieri inside from Matt by Nature. That would be my 2.0. My OG didn't make it because of stem rot, cold temperatures, low light levels. So that would be a replacement I didn't think I needed, but it's stalled. It did grow one root at the time, and I potted it up into Orchid Top as well with small lava rock. But yeah, it's completely stalled. The root stopped growing when I potted it up, even though I didn't cover the root. <laughs> but it's just there, sulking. And I understand that it's sulking. It's probably thinking, what am I doing in this horrific cold place? So I'm going to clean out my little orchid top back here and I'll be back. Fresh media. Oh, it'll be a delight to get rid of all the nasty fern roots. This orchid has been in this pot since September, 2018. That's how long she's been in this one. So a little refresh, I'll be right back. Here's me. I'm just gonna do an update on the orchid tops, reposition Leonis and the Pretermisa. It's become a full-fledged operation now, because I see, I can confirm, we have a beautiful root tip here. I don't want to destroy that. And there's a tiny little root tip here from the root I was trying to guide into the dish. We don't want to destroy that. So, <laughs> I've got my topper here. We're gonna fill it with water. We'll put the orchid top in without the saucer, or maybe with the saucer. Yeah, we can do it with the saucer. The reason I was contemplating no saucers, because I want the orchid top to be submerged, but I don't want to be jiggling around too much <laughs> when I then put the saucer back on afterwards. The whole point here being, minimize abrasions against the roots. So, <laughs> this has now become a whole thing. And, if you're still here, thank you so much if you would give me a like, I would so appreciate that. And uh, fingers crossed, I don't think they have that option here on YouTube, but if you would cross your fingers for my Leonis and I, that would also be very much appreciated. Now, before I go in and pot this orchid up, while she's close to me, I'm just going to, oh, I can't get into the creases. I don't want to, oh. Uh, Anyway, I'm just going to paint a little bit of alcohol all around the base where I can get in with my paintbrush. That's where I'm going to go in. I don't see any scale. Doesn't mean they're not there. It's just I don't see them. So I'm trying to tell myself it's okay that this is all I'm doing. Just keep an eye out for things. <laughs> Super nervous. So bummed when my other Leon is went by the wayside and it tried to <laughs> bloom for me so many times and it just never worked out. I don't want to crush that root. They are extremely strong, these Leonis roots. They might be fine, but there's nothing bendy bendy about them at all. See, it's trying to come out, which is fine if it, as long as it grows down then into the dish and doesn't become some kind of an aerial thing. And yes, I'm not bothered about the dead roots staying on. As a matter of fact, they are so tough and sturdy that they will help me with some kind of stability here. Okay, now we've done that. <laughs> I'm going to be filling up with lava rock, but one rock at a time. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, and before I show you the end result, I have upped the size of this lava rock from the small that I used before to medium. I'll put up my measurements on the screen so that I can keep talking without trying to guess now and go um and ah. And the reason being, if I can get humidity around the orchid with small lava rock, but it's not doing the roots any good, well, medium is only a size up and all I'm working with is water retention and not the 
wicking capacity of what media I am using. Lava Rock doesn't have wicking capacity. So I'm just continuing with the water retention of the Lava Rock to keep my orchid surrounded with humidity. I shall see you in 30 minutes. <laughs> Not really. I'm going to edit this part out. I'll show you the end result. 20 minutes later, <laughs> we're almost there. And I'm very happy to say that that root with the root tip is actually hydrating now. That's good. Maybe we've given this a little bit of a second chance at life. That would be awesome. Now, what happened while I was filling with lava rock, the water level was rising, so I had to tip out a little bit. <laughs> That stem was just, you know, I, that's all I did was just tip out a little bit and continue filling with lava rock. The stem was getting a little bit too low for my liking. So I'm just going to add one more to cover. Let's wet you to cover the one root that was a little bit more protected in the smaller lava rock. And that's all I'm going to do. Not because I feel like I'm cutting corners, but because that's all there is to it. She is very low in the pot, intentionally, because I can use the leaves as stability. I'm thinking positively, that's why I have a stake in case she decides to continue to grow for me, for us. And then maybe one day we'll need the stake. But for now, hmm, just go into the dish. And that is all I ask. All right, let's move on to the Pretan Misa. This has become quite the exercise. Come here. This is Seturcus Pretermisa from Pisa. <laughs> what is going on here? Well, we're about to find out. Same procedure. Going to remove all the lava rock. And the lava rock in this case is large. In some cases mixed with small because of filling some gaps, etc. But 90% large because large chunky roots, etc. Large chunky dead roots, etc. So it's a good thing that we're doing this. Again, I don't want to be ripping her out, even though I can see right here roots that did not appreciate what was going on. And I do believe that would be cold, cold temperatures. So she's kind of telling me, lady, get your act together. Otherwise, I'm sorry. We are going to be parting ways and I don't want that to happen under no circumstances if I can help it. Now I have something that looks beautiful and alive in there, which is good. Now the question is, do I need to go up? Nope, we are not going in all the way. Whoop, we're not disturbing her any further because woohoo! Check this out. I'll point it with an arrow because I can see it. And I hope you can too. We've got beautiful live green slivers in there. And they are staying just as they are. And we're just going to reposition her with a tie. Even her own root, maybe, for now. No, I'm going to get a wire and use the orchid top structure to reposition her, get her stable. Because once the root tips hopefully hit the media, we're going to need them to stay put and not get jiggled around by any breeze and such that would cause them to stop. I'll be right back. That feels pretty sturdy to me and it works. A little bit rudimentary, but it works. I do have a little bit of moss that I may just add. This naturalized itself. This is also natural moss, but I took it from another orchid that was getting a little bit choked out <laughs> by its moss pillow. So I'm cultivating it for cases like these, which I think is amazing because it works. I'm getting into extremely dry conditions now, and that will be for the foreseeable future, which is wonderful for me, but not when you're trying to ensure root growth to go where you want it to. I do not want to put moss right in the back here for this root tip because I would love to get that root tip into the lava rock, then be able to fill up around it. So <laughs> that is the plan. Quick overview where they live, east shelf right here. 
Spoiler alert, to your right, Stan the Man is forming buds. Oh, any day now, it's gonna be Babe Ruth fragrance on the patio. It's gonna be amazing. Anyway, all the orchids here have super high light. Forgive me for the jiggle and the orchid tops. <clears throat> yeah, well, they're all the way down there. They get very bright light and also a lot of residual heat from the terracotta underneath. That is to me the most ideal place for them. I don't have to worry about too much hot air hitting them, drying them out too soon, exacerbating the need for me to mist, etc., etc. That is why I have them down there. And when I hose down the patio with water, it is a wonderful boost of humidity with the warm terracotta coming out from underneath them. It's all hopefully a little bit of a recipe of a microclimate that should work for them. Fingers crossed. I want to say thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate that you were here and that you took the update and as well the little bit of, let's say, doctoring around, readjusting with two orchids. It became a bit more of an operation than I had anticipated, but I hope it will serve its purpose and we don't lose any of the orchids I just addressed. <laughs> Prostechia radiata. Check that out. Peekaboozies, peekaboozies. <laughs> Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.